<laughs> Tell them the good job, man. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Not me. Uh, Unless he gives me an A. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're going to talk about um, the first half hour. We're going to talk about um, just a tiny bit about Wi Fi, and then we're going to get into the quiz. Question? Yes. Uh, what is the arbitrary? <laughs> what? Um, that, by that I meant the bit rate, not counting, uh, so there's 148 bits, some of those bits are used for things other than data, so, uh, the bit rate, not, basically taking all 148 bits, that's the raw bit rate. By a complete time, or by the we will remove the card time with the raw bit rate. Um, I would keep the card time. Okay. And the net bit rate. The net bit rate. The same. The same. Yeah, that rate. question's not on the quiz, right? That's the question. Okay, why fire? <laughs> So I'm going to explain my curiosity is that you diminish with lots of that answer. I guess that's not pedagogically correct, but we'll take it. Okay, uh, Wi-Fi architecture. So we've been talking about um, wireless LAN. Um, last time we talked a little bit about Bluetooth, which is a... Uh, uh, it's, for, it's for something even smaller than local area network, it's called a personal area network. So this is for connecting uh, devices in the in basically the immediate area of yourself, such as Bluetooth headset to your cell phone or digital camera to your computer or something like that. Uh, Wi-Fi is something else entirely. This is a real local area network uh, standard that is basically intended to be the wireless equivalent of Ethernet. So uh, Wi-Fi architecture. Oh, last time we also talked, just to remind you, we talked a little bit about um, the history of the Wi-Fi protocol. Um, and we noted that almost all of, uh, almost all of the, the, the standards that are proposed and used for Wi-Fi exist in the 2.4 gigahertz ISM band. So Wi-Fi architecture. It's very simple. Uh, the standard does not go into a great deal of detail as to um, how Wi-Fi networks should be organized in the same sense, uh, quite unlike how Bluetooth is organized. There we have this, this large hierarchy. Uh, Wi-Fi architecture is simple and it closely, re closely <coughs> resembles Ethernet. Ethernet architecture is super simple. Basically, all you have is uh, stations all connected to um, all connected uh, along a wire. Uh, that wire is probably connected to a router somewhere that connects it to the internet, although that's not necessarily a requirement. Um, in Wi-Fi, uh, we have much the same thing. So we have a shared wireless medium uh, that all devices. Uh, using Wi-Fi are intended to share. Uh, there is a little bit of infrastructure that's needed centrally, such as to control the network name, things like that, and that's, that's provided by what's called an access point. So stations, a mobile node here is called a station. Stations are connected to access points. And the access points provide what's called a basic <coughs> service set. Or BSS. So the BSS gives you things like uh, the network name. Like I said, uh, it can, uh, it can, um, uh, it can, uh, Tasks such as WDP, 
uh, take care of uh, security like that. Just the very basics that you need to connect to a Wi-Fi network. Um, something that you're probably already familiar with if you use Air York is that multiple DSS <coughs> can be connected together. what's called an extended service set. Or ESS. That's just a fancy way of, of basically saying there's a bunch of access points that are all part of the same Wi-Fi network. So for example, here, I'm part of Area York. I go back to the CSE building, I'm still part of Air York, even though I'm connecting to a different access point. So that's basically how uh, the extended service set basically allows uh, those access points to be linked together. So here's figure one. So a typical um, Wi-Fi network might look like this. We'll have a bunch of coverage areas. Each coverage area has an access point. Within each access point, we have a bunch of stations. That communicate with the access point, and the access points are linked together in some kind of distribution network. Furthermore, the distribution network is, you, is probably um, Ethernet. Uh, so if you look around, you can sometimes see um, you can sometimes see these access points, especially in the CSE building. Uh, they're, just, they're mostly mounted on the wall, just under the ceiling, and you can actually see that they're directly connected using Ethernet. So this will probably be connected by Ethernet to a router or a gateway out to the internet. These guys are all linked together. So each of these areas is a provides a basic service set. Got the responsibility of the access point in each area. <coughs> and the, the, the collection of all of those basic service sets is the extended service set. So in other words, um, roaming from point to point, uh, you're always connected to the same networks, the same the same area you are. Uh, generally speaking. If you did this and you wandered from access point to access point and it was a secured network, which Area York is not, but if it was secured, you would only require one WP key to go from access point to access point. And that would also be coordinated under the ESS. Okay, here's a fun fact that I found out. We were uh, wondering about uh, whether this was possible um, back when we were talking about uh, routing. But the fact is that ESS supports roaming. At least it's supposed to. So um, if anyone's intrepid enough to try it, uh, you could uh, open up a Skype session and in principle wander from here around the York campus. And if the uh, if Air York is configured properly, uh, you should be able to. You should be able to keep that connection going wherever you go. Yes. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't know this one. I was talking to you when I was in your thing, and I was logged in multiple times in the CSC building. Yeah. By the time I get here, it allows me back to the login. That's all. What is that? That's interesting. Well, I don't know. Well, it's not because of the way you log into the annual set. You have to so re-authenticate it. There's a point back here. I'm pretty sure it's not completely continuous coverage from here to the CSE building. That's true, however. Because there are certain, um, like, resi like when you go down through the residence buildings, they don't have coverage. It's not it's not a complete coverage system. They just put things in most buildings. So that's a possibility, but... I think you could do it Central Square to Curtis. Okay. Or maybe, like, upstairs to downstairs in this building or something like that. But I don't know if it's... That, that would be a good test. Uh, so it's not, it's not a guarantee that 